A Chinese court has sentenced five more people to death for their part in the July ethnic riots in Urumqi, the capital of the far western Xinjiang region. This brings the number of death sentences for the rioting to at least 22, of which at least nine have already been carried out. The intermediate court in Urumqi sentenced another five people to death with a two-year suspension, which is usually commuted to a life sentence, and jailed another eight for life. The ethnicity of the ten given the death or suspended death sentences was not confirmed, but they all had Uyghur names. A court in Beijing has sentenced a prominent dissident, Liu Xiaobo, to 11 years in prison. He was found guilty on a charge of agitation activities aimed at subversion of the government. Liu Xiaobo was one of a number of authors of a document released online entitled Charter 08, which called for greater political and civil freedom in China. Speaking on Friday, Gregory May, the first secretary at the U.S. Embassy in Beijing, said the United States continues to call for Liu's immediate release. Before the sentencing, the Chinese government slammed what it said was foreign diplomatic interference in the trial. Diplomats from the United States, Canada, Australia and several European countries were barred from the courthouse when Leo's trial began on Wednesday, as were journalists and all but two members of his family. Earlier on Thursday, Foreign Ministry spokesperson Jiang Yu accused foreign governments of crude meddling in China's internal affairs. China says it will impose temporary anti-dumping tariffs on carbon steel fastener imports from the European Union following a year-long investigation. The measure follows an EU decision on Tuesday to extend for another 15 months anti-dumping tariffs on shoe imports from China, despite strong opposition from some European shoe manufacturers and member nations, including the United Kingdom. The latest announcement also follows anti-dumping measures and investigations initiated by the United States and the EU this year against Chinese fastener imports. Fastener exporters in the EU will, starting December the 28th, pay tariffs ranging up to 25%. Chinese Commerce Minister Chen Deming has warned that China's export situation will continue to be grim next year, despite the improving economic conditions of its trade partners. Chen said the prospects for exports in the year ahead are not very positive as the world economy won't fully recover from the financial crisis in the short term. Chen told the nation's annual Commerce Work Conference that China's exporters will face further hard times due to the fact that many foreign nations are expected to withdraw their economic stimulus packages during the second half of 2010. During the third quarter, both the United States and the European Union, China's top two trade partners, reported positive year-on-year -year economic growth after months of decline. A top Hollywood studio head has expressed the hope that China will allow more foreign films into the country in a move designed to benefit both domestic and foreign filmmakers. James Genopoulos, the chairman and chief executive officer of Fox Filmed Entertainment, was in Beijing to promote a sci-fi movie, Avatar, which will be released in China in January. On Monday, the World Trade Organization upheld a ruling against Chinese regulations on the import and distribution of books and audiovisual products, saying that Chinese regulations fail to comply with world trade rules. China imports just 20 foreign films a year for theatrical release, but Genopolis said more imported movies would boost the entire market, as well as cut down on piracy. A Taiwanese man has been arrested and accused of defrauding hundreds of people by posing as a member of the Brunei royal family. According to local media reports, Wai Yao Sheng is said to have claimed to have been authorized by a Brunei bank to set up a royal investment fund in the country. He managed to scam more than $9 million from his victims. Mr. Wai gained notoriety after penning an autobiography revealed later as a fake. His 2001 book, entitled I Made 100 Million at Age 18, and purporting to describe how he achieved success as a teenage entrepreneur, was exposed as fiction and rapidly removed from the shelves. And that's the BON headlines for now, but we'll be back with more news after this.